Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I hope you guys are having a wonderful evening. So it's Friday. Normally, I do these lives on Thursday night, but since yesterday was Thanksgiving, I decided to spend the time with my family, and I would be here today on Friday. So I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you hadn't heard yet, since it's Friday, we're doing our annual Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. So here you go. Um, if you haven't checked it out yet, the website is ameliasdressageacademy.com forward slash Black Friday. So we have some awesome deals going on until Monday. We have 20% off of some of our select courses. So it's a really good deal. I don't do sales that often. And I hope you go and check it out. Maybe get a course for yourself or a course for a friend. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about the courses that I have for sale. I also am going to answer your questions, which is also really fun. And I want to hear from you guys. So how was your Thanksgiving? Did you spend your time with your family? Did you spend your time with your horse? Um, one of my favorite things to do on Thanksgiving is to go to the barn and ride my horses. Unfortunately, yesterday, it was so crazy here. It was really, really windy. And they shut the power off at my house at 5 a.m. So like 5 a.m., the power turns off. Luckily, we have a generator, and so we were able to get some lights, and I was able to work a little on my computer, but they didn't turn the power back on until sometime today. I was at the barn, so we had no lights for Thanksgiving. It definitely was better than having fires, though, so that's why they turn off the lights is because um, the, the power lines a lot of times start fires, and the winds were really high, so they turn off the lights. And I was telling my husband, you know, it's inconvenient not to have lights, but it's a lot better than having to evacuate horses or have your house burned down. So that was my Thanksgiving. Um, let's see. Donna says, I keep my horses at home. So I spent Thanksgiving with them. Lucky you. But I always, too like to spend some time during Thanksgiving. And you guys that are watching live, let me know in the chat what you are grateful for. And I think it's really important to slow down and spend a little time to count the many blessings that we all have in our life. And of course, horses, I mean, just the fact that we're able to ride and that we have horses and horses to me are the most amazing creatures. Like they're so honest, they're so generous and it's just amazing what they do for us. The fact that we can even ride them is incredible. And whenever I'm upset or, you know, that's just the best thing to do is to go and sit in your horse's stall, spend time with your horse. And I'm so grateful for that. And another thing that I'm really grateful for is my health and, you know, just having a body that does what I tell it to and that I can get up and I can ride. That is huge. That's really huge and a huge blessing. And the other thing that I'm so grateful for is all of you guys. So, um, you know, it's so amazing whenever I go to a clinic or to a show and I meet people in my audience who I've never met in person before. And they tell me how much my videos and my content have helped them with their horses. Because it's, I never imagined that that could be possible. I never imagined that I could sit here on my computer and make these videos and these courses and that it would actually touch someone else and help someone else and that I could spread that knowledge virtually. So that's amazing. And when I think about, you know, like my life and giving back and the legacy that I want to live is certainly that of educating and spreading knowledge and helping you guys, uh, I always say, learn to love your ride, but helping you guys to have a better relationship with your horse and to feel confident and to stay safe and to be able to teach your horse and educate your horse. That is just my mission in life. And I've struggled a lot. I've ridden a ton of horses. And I've also had a lot of really amazing, amazing teachers that have helped me along the way. So 
Uh, Sue Martin is one of them. She helped me. I've learned so much from her. Mindy Bauer, um, Christine Traurig, now Yo Hinneman, but all of these teachers in my life and all of the horses that I've ridden, sometimes horses are the best teachers. So yeah, let's see who else says, who else is here on the chat? Devin, I'm grateful for my family, friends, and horses who are extraordinarily patient with my kids. Yeah, it's amazing how horses can be so patient with kids. Um, Linda says she's learning the purity of three greats from my master class. Good for you, Linda. Dawn is grateful for me. That's nice. Um, Valerie's grateful for a barn that takes good care. Um, good. Well, awesome. I hope that you guys had wonderful Thanksgiving. Let's see, Muriel says... Healthy enough to still ride at 69. Cancer survivor after 32 years. That's amazing, Muriel. Good. And that's one thing that's so cool is that you can do dressage even as you get older, whereas a lot of other sports, you're just kind of done, you know. Um, but dressage, I have a lot of clients that are in their 60s, in their 70s, and still making progress and still riding every day. And that is amazing. So, um, I wanted to talk quickly about the sale that I have going on. So the Black Friday sale you have until Monday night to enroll. And I have 20% off of some of my courses. The first, we have some of these awesome training scale water bottles. So the first, uh, I think we have 40 of them. So the first 40 people that spend $300 or more will get one of these water bottles. I think they're in navy, so they're not in black, but they're really sturdy. They're really nice. And they help you remember the training scale. And the training scale is everything in dressage. So the training scale and rhythm, suppleness, connection, working your way up to the top is something that I use with every single horse and every single student I ride. So we've already had a few people sign up to get water bottles today. We still have some left, though. So be sure you're one of those first 40 people. Um, one of the other courses, one of the main courses we have on sale is the Rider Position Masterclass. So there's the image for it. And it's 20% off. So you can get it when you sign up by Monday, you'll get it for 360, which is a really good deal. The Rider Position Masterclass. So if you guys saw any of those videos that I did with the muscles, like where um, I had the muscles drawn on me, and then Stephanie was talking about what muscles you need to use to put your legs on, what muscles you need to use to sit the trot. So a lot of you guys were asking, well, like, how do I activate my glute med? What exercises can I do to strengthen my glute med? What about my obliques? What can I do? So the rider position masterclass goes over all of that. We go through each part of your position and then Stephanie gives you unmounted exercises. So I give you like the riding side of it. And then Stephanie gives you the exercises that you can do when you're not riding to make your body strong in the right way. And I'm definitely a big believer. And particularly as you guys get older, it's really, really important to take care of your body and to exercise and do things when you're not riding to improve your straightness and your symmetry and to strengthen the correct muscles for when you are riding. And so I actually just started Pilates, which I'm just loving. I do like a private lesson and it's so helpful because I'm crooked and I have weird patterns that my body gets into. So the rider position masterclass is great because not only do you get the riding part of me explaining, like, here's exactly what you do with your seat. Here's exactly what you do with your legs. Here's exactly what you do with your hands. But then there's also exercises like, okay, here's what you can do to make your legs stronger for when you're riding, or here's what you can do to make your seat more supple for when you're riding. And I think particularly, I don't know if any of you guys feel this, but Going into winter right now, when the days are so short, like I was driving home at 440 and it's already getting dark. And so it's a hard time to stay motivated for riding when the days are short and the weather's difficult. So it's a really good time right now to take some time to 
invest in your knowledge. So to take an online course or do something like that. And it's also a really good time during the winter to focus on your health and your fitness. So on days that you can't ride to do some exercises that help you for when you are riding. So with the rider position masterclass, you will, by the end of the masterclass, you'll have basically a workout that you can do that targets each section of your body. So your seat, your legs, your arms, your symmetry, all of that. And so, yeah, it's a really good course. Um, the other course that we have on sale for Black Friday is I know a lot of you guys are already part of the monthly workshops that we do. And those are like my favorite thing ever. So next month, last month we did half halts. Next month, we're going to do suppleness and straightness. So you can sign up for that workshop until Monday and you get a two day free trial and you also get 20% off of your first month. So for the workshop next month, which is about suppleness and straightness, and I think this is something that a lot of uh, riders really struggle with because, you know, we want so much in dressage. I think we hear a lot about getting our horses straight, but we don't want our horse just like stiff, like a rod. We want our horse to be supple within the straightness. And so that's why, like, if you look at this water bottle again, and you see how suppleness is here, and then straightness is up there. So it's really important that you get your horse supple before you start making your horse straight. Because if you just try to make your horse straight, and they're not supple yet, then for one, you have a horse that's tense, because part of suppleness is mental. So you have a tense horse, that's stiff like a rod. And that's really not a good thing. So next month in the in the academy, we're going to be working on suppleness and straightness. I have exercises coming out on December 1st. And the exercises are going to be specific exercises that you guys can start practicing to work on getting your horse both supple and straight. I have some really good ones. And I also, Stephanie did a few exercises with me. So we have some stretches that you guys can do when you're in the saddle. So I highly recommend the monthly workshops. They're a great way to stay motivated this winter. I do a live Zoom lecture with the students every month, which is really fun. So yeah, I hope some of you guys join us for suppleness and straightness in the month of December. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, I'm going to answer some of the questions that we have tonight. And yes, let's see. Um, Donna says, different ways to lunge horses and why? So that's a good question. Um, I always think it's important whenever you are lunging your horse that you lunge your horse in a way that makes them better to ride. So you know, I never want to lunge my horse and just let them like tear around a thousand miles an hour and get all worked up and all stupid and adrenaline pumping because you'd never want to get on a horse like that. So I always like to um, teach my horse to lower their head, teach them to bend. I usually put side reins on them and I lunge them in a way that's really productive to the way I want them to be ridden. So I'm working on my groundwork course and I go a lot into that in the groundwork course about different ways to lunge your horse, how to put up the side reins, all of that. Um, oh, Claudia is asking. So yeah, the, the groundwork masterclass is going to be out next year. So. Um, I think I'm going to, I'm going to open it up like near the beginning of 2022. Uh, okay. Claudia is here. I really want to take one of your courses. I'm at training level and wish to compete. Which would you recommend? Okay. That's a good question, Claudia. So if you're, um, the rider position masterclass is really great for riders of any level, because I think that so much of riding and a lot of people say, even below this training scale is rider position. So a lot of riding is getting your body in the right position, 
and making the age correctly so that your horse can understand. So that's a great one for regardless of any level that you are. I also, and we have for sale for Black Friday. So I have a training level masterclass. I have a first level and I have a second level. So those courses are really designed specifically for, okay, I want to show training level. And I go through the purpose of training level, how to ride every single movement, how the judge is going to score you, how to get ready for the show. And I go through every single test of the level. The other thing that's cool about the training level, first level and second level masterclasses is that you can take a video of yourself riding through the test and send it to me and then I'll score it and give you feedback. So that's a really great way to get some personalized help. But yeah, Claudia, either one of those is um, a great course. Let's see. uh, What other? Okay. So I had a other, a couple questions, one on YouTube and one on, um, Facebook here about how to get your horse on the bit (laughs) and contact and connection. So a couple of things. One thing that's always the most important thing is your position. So like we're talking about tonight, rider position, making sure that you're sitting up tall, having a bend in your elbows, having a straight line from your elbow to the horse's mouth. So many riders when they're trying to get their horse on the bit, they like straighten their arms or they tip forward or they tense up. So first off is your position. And then the second thing is really that you need to teach your horse about pressure and release. So you need to teach your horse basically that if you put pressure on the bit, then the horse should get And so I usually start it like if I have a horse that's really, really braced, I start that from the ground where I just, you know, stand by the side of the horse, teach them to bend their head to one side, teach them to bend their head to the other side. And then also from the ground, you can take up on both reins, get the horse to flex at the pole. So that's what I go to is like really just educating the horse that when you pull, they need to give. And then little by little, you're transferring that over into the saddle. So when I get in the saddle, same thing is kind of just teaching them when I take the left rein, they give. When I take the right rein, they give. Once you have that, then when you take up two reins, they give. So that's kind of how I teach my horses about the contact and the connection. Okay, let's see. Next question is from Amy. I think she's here, Amy. Trying to transform a former Amish cart horse into a dressage pony. Any suggestions how to encourage him to seek the bit more? Okay. Contact on him always means stop. Currently doing lots of stretching with long side reins. Um, Yeah. So I think you're on the right track. I would add to that, like I just said, teaching him to bend a little left and right. And then... um, little by little shortening up the side reins so that he's coming more into a frame, I think will help you. Uh, Okay, let's see. Renelle says, how long did it take you to get through second level? I'm having so much trouble. (laughs) Okay, Renelle, second level is really hard. I think second level is one of the hardest levels because there's so many transitions in second level. Like you have to do can or walk, can or walk, can or walk, and then you have to do can or trot. And so second level is a hard level. And it's also the first time that you have um, collection. So it's normal that second level might take you more than a year. I also think it's good, you know, when you feel like you have the counter canner and the can or walk canners really confirmed to go ahead and try some flying changes because you don't want your horse to be so comfortable in the counter canner that they'll never do a flying change. So, but yeah, second level is just hard. Okay. What else? Christine says, I just want to thank you for the black Friday sale. Yeah. So if you guys go to, um, we also have some hats. We have the, um, the training scale water bottles for sale. So if you go to this page, amelia's dressageacademy.com forward slash Black Friday, 
and you go all the way to the bottom, there's a link to the swag store. And so there's some shirts for sale. There's these water bottles are for sale, although we don't have that many. So if you want a water bottle, you should go get one sooner rather than later. And yeah, there's some cool stuff there. Okay, Valerie says, when do you ha use the half halt on your right rein and left rein? Is it used to ask the hind end to step under? Okay, Valerie, that's a good question. So I did last year, I did, um, or no, not last year. What did I say? Last month, <laughs> I did a workshop on half halts. And so if you're a member of the academy, if you're not, you should join the Academy monthly workshops, and you will get access up to some of the past workshops. So you can see the lecture that I did on half halts. But basically, if you want to put weight on your horse's left hind leg, you half halt with the left ring. If you want to put weight on your horse's right hind leg, you half halt with your right ring. A lot of times we're either in shoulder four or on a bending line. So if you're on a circle, or if you're in shoulder in, your horse is already engaged on the inside hind leg. So then you that's why you have halt on the outside ring. So if you're in shoulder in, if you're on a circle to the left, if you're cantering to the left, you're half halting on your right rein to help engage the right hind leg. So if you want to learn more about half halts, you should join the monthly workshops and those are for sale for Black Friday as well. It's such a good deal. Honestly, the monthly workshops I think are my all time favorite because we have a group of people and every month we have a new live Zoom lecture, which is private for people that are in the academy. We have new exercises. You have access to me to ask me your questions. So it's really it's like the best. I love it. It's my favorite course, my favorite everything that I have. So, yes. What else? Um, Donna says that I won't make it. Her Christmas present is the masterclass on rider position. Scotty will be so happy. Thank you. That's awesome. You signed up for the rider position masterclass today. And it is true when I think it's so important that you take care of your body and that you work on position. It will make your horse so much happier. And I feel like that's our, our horse is that we need to take care of our bodies and we need to make sure our work correctly so that we, when we get in the saddle and when your trainer tells you to put your left leg on that you can actually do that. So that is super important. Uh, let's see, Muriel, do you have some Cavaletti or ground pull exercises besides the one in the training scale course? Um, yeah, so I do. I need to film some more Cavaletti uh, exercises. I got Cavalettis for my birthday and I have not used them enough. So we'll have to put that on the list of things to do. Um, I have a funny story for you guys. So, you know, we've been doing all the the drone footage. And um, when my husband first got the drone, I told him that I was a little concerned that he might hit the horse with the drone. So I thought he should practice flying the drone a lot before we tried it around the horses. But he's been really good with it. It's been going good. But the other night, for some reason, the like you have to install an app on your phone to be able to fly the drone from your cell phone. And for some reason, something happened to the app. So he had to reinstall the app. And then I, it was late. And I was like, I'm going to bed. But I hear the drone start up in the living room here. And so I guess he was flying the drone in the living room. And somehow he... Um, he ran the drone into his knee and like cut his knee with the blades of the drone because it has like these blades. So he came to bed and he was like, I, I might be bleeding in the bed because I um, ran the drone into my knee. So <laughs> luckily the drone is okay. But uh, yeah, just so you guys know that the things that we do to bring you guys awesome footage which the drone footage is so cool. And I have drone footage of the snowman. I have, um, for those of you guys that are in the monthly workshops, um, 
I have some drone footage for next month where we do the spiral in and out and I have it on the drone and it's so cool to see from the drone. So I'm really excited about that. Um, let's see, Donna. So the Academy, I consider Amelia's Dressage Academy just as like all of the paid courses and the monthly workshops are a part of that. Oh, when I put up the website, you see it backwards. Sorry, my brilliant plan failed. Well, it's Amelia's Dressage Academy.com forward slash Black Friday if you want to check out what we have for sale. Uh, another thing that I wanted to say is, you know, I give a lot away a lot of free content and I will always continue doing that because like I said, I really enjoy it and I really want to make dressage accessible to everyone, no matter, you know, where you are in the world, what you can afford, uh, the benefit of my paid program. So if you sign up for a masterclass or if you sign up, I also have some workshops for sale. The benefit of, of those programs is that they're much more organized and they're much more in depth. So the, the, the paid programs really go deep into every subject that we cover. There's worksheets for you to fill out. The other thing is it's more access to me. So at the bottom, like on the teachable site at the bottom, there's a box um, that you can type in and ask me questions. So I really try to monitor that, monitor that. And whenever you have a question, I get back to you as soon as possible. And I think that's important. It's really important to have someone that you trust that you can reach out to and ask questions when you have a question. So what else? Uh, let's see. We have some other questions here. How do you slip one set of reins but not the other in a double bridle? I can't get my fingers coordinated. <laughs> okay, that question's from Lola. Um, so I think riding with a double bridle is definitely something that takes a lot of time to get used to. And I would recommend, like, if you haven't ridden with a double bridle before, to just start riding with a double bridle or riding with two sets of reins on easy days. So on days where you're just like hacking or going on the trail ride, so you can really pay attention and get that dexterity in your fingers. One thing that I find really helpful when I ride in the double bridle is that I have my regular snaffle rein I hold normally. So like between my, my ring finger and my pinky finger. And that I usually have a thick rubber rein for my snaffle rein. And then for my curb rein, I have a small slick leather rein. So I have one rein that's rubber and one rein that's small and just thin leather. And that way I can really feel the difference in my hand and the snaffle rein stays tight whereas the curb rein is more easily that I can let it out or tighten it up because I think that's important. Even when you ride in the double, you want to most of the time have contact on the snaffle and then be able to just a little bit lengthen and, and tighten the curb. So that might help you, but it's just one of those things that you have to, um, to practice that. Okay. Um, Shelly says all the courses are awesome. Yay. I'm glad that you enjoy the courses. Yeah. It's, it's fun to put together curriculum. And like I said, on YouTube, it's hard to organize things in a way that makes sense. And so one of the benefit of the courses is that I can really go through and say like, okay, here's the steps that you need to take in order to get here and give you guys the tools and the information that you need in a really organized way. So that's helpful. Um, let me know, do you guys have any other questions? I'm looking here on YouTube. I have, so I'm live both on Facebook and on YouTube, which is kind of crazy. Oh, here's a good question. I would like to know how you stop your horse from rushing. I'm having a lot of trouble. Okay, so if you have a horse that rushes, this is from Haxmanic on YouTube. If you have a horse that rushes, the best solution is to do a lot of small turns. Because if your horse wants to go fast, pulling back on two reins and telling them to slow down is not going to work. It's just simply not going to work. But 
if you make tight turns and keep them like bending and a little bit drifting the hindquarters and in shoulder in, where you're bending and turning and bending and turning and bending and turning and bending and turning, then that is going to slow them down. Every time you turn them and push them off your inside leg, it's kind of like putting your car in neutral where the engine is still going, but it's not driving so much forward. And then that way, when your horse stays at the tempo you want, you can let them go a little bit straight. But the second they start rushing, then you go to bending and turning again. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, what else? I think that's it for tonight. I hope, like I said, again, I hope you guys had a really good Thanksgiving. I hope you got to spend some time with your family and your friends. I was thinking back to last Thanksgiving. So last Thanksgiving, we were still very much in lockdown and I actually did a live webinar last Black Friday. So because I think everyone was feeling really isolated and uh, no one really got to spend any time with their family. So I did a live webinar, which was super fun. I did not do that this year, but I am still doing that Black Friday sale. So I really hope to see you in some of the courses. And like I said, if you want to get one of these water bottles, we have 40 of them. So for the first 40 people that spend $300, you get one of these cool water bottles. Um, and yeah, I hope that you guys have a wonderful evening. I'll be live next Thursday. So be sure to send me your questions beforehand. I always post on Facebook, Amelia's Dressage Club, and you can always email me if you have any questions. My email is Amelia, Amelia at AmeliaNewcombDressage.com. So anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. I hope you enjoy your horses and that's it. Good night, everyone.